Welcome to Chemistry with Dr. Z. I'm Dr. Z, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the development of the periodic table, uh, which is part of the specification for both GCSE and IGCSE chemistry. So, um, uh, the atomic structure was fully discovered in the 20th century. So, before the discovery, the full discovery of the atomic uh, structure, there were two ways to categorize elements. So, elements were categorized either based on their chemical and physical properties or based on their atomic mass, because the atomic mass was discovered earlier before the discovery of the atomic structure. So in the early 19th century, elements were arranged based on their atomic mass. Um, the atomic number was not yet discovered, so the only way they can arrange the element was based on their atomic mass. So elements were arranged in order of their atomic mass, and they noticed that their periodic pattern and the properties of the elements. So each period, there were some uh, periodic uh, pattern in their properties. Uh, this is why it was called the periodic table. Early periodic table was not complete, um, and many elements did not fit well in that uh, table and they were uh, placed in order of atomic mass and because they were based on the atomic mass and the atomic number was not taken into consideration and here the atomic um, the properties as well were not uh, taken into account so um, in 1869, uh, Dmitry Mandlev um, started to create his own periodic table, and he, he uh, tried to overcome some of the problems of the early periodic table. So he took 50 elements, and he arranged them into a table of elements where he left some gaps. So you can see here there were some gaps in the table. Um, when elements later on were discovered, they actually found their way in these gaps. He still arranged the elements in order of um, atomic mass, not atomic number, because the atomic number was not discovered at that time. Uh, he also took into account here the properties of the elements as well. So uh, the periodic table has what we call the periods and groups. So the periods are the horizontal lines or these rows. So each row is called a period. And then the, um, the columns are called the group. So usually the elements in the same group have similar properties. So this is what Mandelieff did. So he started to switch the order of the elements if they didn't fit in the group they've been in. So if he found some element that should be in a certain place, but they didn't fit the properties within that group, he moved it into a different group. So um, um, he then, um, when the new elements were discovered, they fitted well into the gaps that he left in his uh, table. And then the discovery of the isotopes as well in the early 20th century confirmed that Mandelieff was correct not to place the element strictly uh, in order of atomic mass, as some of the isotopes had different atomic mass, but they have similar properties. So the difference here for the Mandelieff uh, table is that he took into account the uh, properties of the elements in addition to the um, uh, addition to their atomic mass. So now moving on to the modern periodic table as we know it. So the modern periodic table was developed in the 20th century following the discovery of the atomic structure and the atomic number. So the element, instead of being arranged based on their atomic mass, they were arranged based on their atomic number because atomic numbers refers to the number of protons and number of electrons. And we should know now that the number of uh, electrons is which determines is the factor that determines the uh, chemical properties of the different elements. So the elements were arranged here in order of their atomic uh, number. As you can see, the number here on top of each element refers to the atomic number, and they were bought in this way. Um, the, their, when they did so, they found that there were repeated patterns in the properties of the elements. So the 
um, properties were repeated periodically. So this is why it's called the periodic table. Um, we can see that the elements on the left are metals. So these elements on the left here are metals. On the right, we can find the non-metals. Elements with similar properties were found in the same group. So each group will have different elements and these elements have similar properties. The, we have uh, certain group numbers. So we have the first one is called group one. This is called group two. We're gonna ignore the one in the middle. And then this is three, four, five, six, seven, and group zero. The group number tells you about the number of the electrons in the outer shell. So all elements in group one have only one electron in their outer shell. All elements in group two have only two electrons in their outer shell, and so on. Um, group zero here, they were not called group eight. They are called group zero. This uh, group has the noble gases. Noble gases are these group of elements which are non-reactive and they have a complete or a full outer shell. They all have eight electrons in their outer shell with on the exception here is helium because helium actually has only one shell of electrons and we know that shell is has a maximum capacity of two electrons. So helium has a maximum of two electrons. So the outer shell of helium has two electrons. All of these elements in group zero are non-reactive. They are called noble gases. They are inert, non-reactive because they have a complete outer shell. So they don't have tendency to lose or gain electrons. They are quite stable. The number of electrons in the outer shell governs the chemical property of the element. So um, chemical properties means the way they react. So um, if you know the property of one element, you can also predict the properties of the element in the same group. For example, if we know the property of lithium here from group one, we can predict the properties of all of the elements in the same group because they're going to have similar chemical properties. The reason behind that is that all these elements have only one electron in their outer electron shell. So um, these elements in group one, for example, because they have only one electron, they have tendency to lose that electrons to reach the stable configuration of full um, outer shell of electrons. So if they use this electron, their outer shell then becomes the shell before, which is the full uh, outer shell. Uh, we can also, in addition to that, predict the, um, uh, the trend of reactivity from each group. So there is a certain trend of reactivity in each group, which is different depending on the group. So group one, for example, the reactivity increases down the group. So if you move down the group, the reactivity increases. So if you look at lithium, sodium, potassium, so potassium will be more reactive than sodium and sodium is more reactive than lithium and so on. On the other hand, group seven has a different trend. So group seven here, the reactivity will decrease down the group. So reactivity increases as we go up or decreases as we go down. It's a different trend. So as you go down the group, the reactivity will uh, decrease. Um, about the period, so what does uh, the period tell us? So the uh, row or the period, uh, refers to the number of outer shells of um, or the number of the um, electron shells. So um, for each new period, uh, this means there is a different uh, outer shell of electrons. Uh, so each period has uh, means there is a new outer shell of electron. So when you look at the modern periodic table, you can predict the property of the element based on where you can find it in the periodic table. So the um, we know the metals and non-metals and where we can find them in the periodic table. So most uh, elements in general are metals. Uh, the ones metals are mainly on the left of the periodic table. So these are 
namely the metals. Non-metals, we can find them on the right of the periodic table. So um, metals tend to lose electrons when they react to give positively charged ions. Non-metals don't form positively charged ions. They either gain electrons to give um, negatively charged ions or they can share their electrons. We're going to talk about the chemical reactivity and type of bonds when we reach, when we talk about the different types of bonds.